Man, would you stay standing as we just read the word this morning? If you have your Bible, go ahead and turn to Psalm chapter 23. Psalm chapter 23. You can follow along on the screen. We're going to read the whole chapter this morning. Go ahead and put that up. Psalm chapter 23. It says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely. Everyone say, Surely. Your goodness and love, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Oh, we'll go back. We'll start at verse one here. We'll go, let's go verse one. I thought that felt weird, but I thought, you know, I don't know, maybe I didn't drink enough coffee this morning or something. The Lord is my shepherd. Say shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, say through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. You thankful for that word today? Amen, amen. Go ahead and find a seat across the room. Thank you, worship team, for playing this morning and leading us in that time of worship. We're continuing our series today, Fear Not. Everyone say, Fear Not. Fear Not. And if you're taking notes this morning, the title of the message today is, I'm Going Through It. Say, I'm Going Through It. I'm Going Through It. Maybe you came in today and you feel like, man, I am going through it right now. You feel like it's just a journey right now. Maybe every time you open up your mailbox and you see all of these uh, political things in your box, you're like, I'm going through this right now. Like, I'm ready for this. To all, the, all the phone calls that say, like, potential spam on it. You're like, I'm going through it right now. You're ready. You're like, I'm done with all of this. But today we're talking about going through. We're talking about Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. We're talking about I don't have to fear because he is with me. He's with me. I just want to know this morning, where are the married people at? Married people in the room, where are you at? Married people. Great. One person's excited about being married. Let's go. Everyone else is like, uh, you don't know the car ride I had here to church this morning. <laughs> How many know that marriage changes things, right? It changes things. I remember before I was married, my, my wife and I, we were friends, and then we had a crush on each other, then we were boyfriend and girlfriend, and then you become fiancés, and then you get married. Your, your whole relationship changes, and all of a sudden you're living together, you're sharing a bank account. Some of you are like, yeah, we are sharing a bank account. This is changing some stuff for me, right? It, it changes things. There's certain things that when you get married, things change. All of a sudden you're like, now I guess I like these movies. I didn't like chick flicks before, but now I like chick flicks, I guess. I didn't used to eat vegetables, and now I guess I like vegetables. Like marriage, it... It changes some things. You get married and things begin to change. I know for my wife and I, like, I am a Detroit Lions fan, okay? The Detroit Lions. I've been there since 0 and 16. That's been my team. When we were dating, that was my team. My wife grew up in House of Sinners. I don't think they're here this morning. Chicago Bears fans. We'll pray for them. The altar will be open later. When we were dating, that was my team, and, and that was her family's team, so that, you know, there was a little conflict there twice a year in the season, but when we became married, things changed, and now my wife is saved and is a Detroit Lions fan. Things, <laughs> things change. When you, when you get married, marriage changes things. How many of you have heard this statement before? If you've been around church, you've probably heard it, Jesus changes everything. All right, you've heard that before, Jesus changed. It's a great statement. It's a true statement, but it needs a little explanation. Because when I said yes to Jesus, I'm not all of a sudden like jacked and can dunk a basketball. When I said yes to Jesus, I didn't become super wealthy all of a sudden. So what does that mean that Jesus changes everything? It's, it's Jesus changes the way that I see everything. Jesus changes the way that I, everything else in my life, how I see that, how I view that. Marriage changes everything. When I became married to my wife, that changed, but everything in my life changed. When we say yes to Jesus, everything in our life begins to change. Everything, we, we see everything different. This verse, it says, when I go through the valley, I will fear no evil. Because I've said yes to Jesus, I have a different view of the valley. 
I have a different view of fear. I have a different view of evil. I see all of it different. The relationship you have to it changes how you see it, changes how you view it. Anybody love that it's fall season right now, right? It's, it's getting cold. I had to wear a coat to church this morning. I was like, I'm not ready for this. Pastor Brian said that November is this week. That scared me a little bit. Like, if fall is, is here, the leaves are changing colors. They're starting to fall. Yesterday, I opened up the windows and I looked outside and I went, oh, the yard is getting filled with leaves. <laughs> and my boys all went and looked there. Let me see, let me see. And they're like, yes. I'm like, what do you mean, yes? <laughs> right, they, they viewed the leaves. They viewed all that as, now I get a jump in it. I can play with it. Like, this is gonna be fantastic. I look at it as, that's work. <laughs> I gotta rake it into piles. I gotta get it into bags. They see it as fun, I see it as annoying. I see it as a nuisance. Your relationship to it changes how you view it. I see it as a nuisance, but if you're the soil, you would see it as nutrients. Your relationship to it changes how you view it. Our relationship to Jesus, what we're gonna see today, should change how we view the valley should change how we view going through trials. In 2 Corinthians, we see Paul speaking, and he's talking about the church in Macedonia, and here's what it says. And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. Look at this. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. In the midst of a severe trial, in the midst of extreme poverty, they are overflowing with joy. They're, they have rich generosity. How is it that in the midst of a trial, how is it in the midst of poverty that, that you could be overflowing with joy, that you could be so generous? It's because Jesus changes everything. It's because when we see the, the grace that God has, it changes our view of different things in our life. There's a common theme that I found between this Psalm 23 and this, this church in Macedonia, and it is this, is that situations should not determine our identities. The situation that I'm going through should not determine my identity. An event should not determine who I am. I feel like there's some people today who walked in with, with an identity based on what they're going through. An identity based on their trial. An identity based on the, an event that has happened. Well, I am depressed. I am an addict. We, we start to own what we are going through. This verse in Psalm 23, it says, even though I go through the valley, but it doesn't start with saying I go through the valley. It starts with the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. If the Lord is my shepherd, that means I am a sheep. If I know whose I am, I know who I am. I am not the valley. I am not the trial. I am not what I am going through. I am not it. Everyone say, I am not it. Come on, say, I am not it. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. My mama told me, and you are not it. Remember that one? You're not it. We are not what we are going through. We are not what the world has labeled. We are not what, what people say that we are because we've gone through something. My identity is not in what I'm going through. It's in who God says that I am. And because I am not it, I can go through it. Because I am not it, I can overcome it. Because I am not it, I don't have to live there forever. Do not take an event and take it as our identity. You are a child of God. You are chosen. You are sheep. He is our shepherd. When I know whose I am, I know who I am. I am not it. The Lord's my shepherd. When I go through the valley, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. It doesn't take long of looking around our world today to find some stuff to be fearful of. <laughs> Scroll social media and you're gonna find something to be scared of. Turn on the news, you're gonna find something to be fearful of. There's, there's things all around us, there's things happening all the time that, that give us reason to fear. Wars, rumors of wars, inflation, election season, uncertainty, unemployment, the list goes on and on and on. And what do we start to do when the fears start to creep in? I hide, I avoid it, I delay it, I don't wanna do it, there's fear, I don't wanna face that yet, so we do our best to put it off. But could it be, I wonder this morning, could it be that where God is trying to get us to, he has to first take us through it? 
that where God wants you to be, you first have to go through it, but take heart this morning because it says that you don't have to fear because he is with me. He's with me. I don't have to avoid it. I don't have to hide it when the darkness creeps in. I don't have to, I don't have to be scared of it because he is with me. I feel like for a long time the church as a whole has missed on talking about this in this way. We, the, the church as a whole has done a great job of teaching people here's how to get out of it, but we haven't done a great job teaching people here's how to go through it. Here's how to get out of it. Here's how to not have problems. You say yes to Jesus and everything's going to be easy. That's not really true. We haven't done a great job of teaching people. This is, this is how we go through a season. This is how we face it. This is how we endure it. What do I mean? The church as a whole has done a great job of teaching people how to live, but we haven't done a good job of teaching people here's how to die. This was something that, that our, our staff was on our staff retreat this last week, and I was praying, and I felt like God just laid this on my heart to share with our staff, and it just kind of fit into this sermon this week. Don't you love how God begins to work in that? He's just, he's just working that in me right now, and I felt like we've done a great job, the church as a whole. This is how to live a life, and this is how, how to do this, but not here's how to suffer. Not here's how to endure. Well, I don't know about that, Pastor. Shouldn't we just talk about how like we should be happy and, and Jesus, you know, is, makes me happy and, and there's all this. And, and when you say yes to Jesus, it's, it's the best. Life. Like all of that's true, but there's nowhere in the Bible that it promises that life's gonna be easy. It's actually the opposite. In this life, you will face troubles. In this life, it will be difficult. That's a guarantee. You're guaranteed that life's gonna be hard. We're guaranteed suffering. Happy Sunday, everybody. Guaranteed suffering. But it says, take heart for I have overcome the world. What I love about the church in Macedonia, what I, what I love about this psalm is that while I might go through suffering, it doesn't have to affect my joy. Because I know how the story ends. The event does not affect my feelings. I can still feel joy in the midst of suffering. I, I can still feel joy in the midst of pain, in the midst of a valley, in the midst of trial. We have to look at the valley and we have to recognize that God wants to get me through this valley. I don't need to avoid it. I don't need to hide it. I gotta go through the valley. Are we prepared to, to go through it? Are we prepared that, that this life will be difficult? I did a, a study on where are the top places that revival is happening in the world today? Top places that revival is happening in the world. Number one, Iran, Thailand, Myanmar, Algeria, and India. The top five places where revival is happening in our world today. All those places are facing persecution. It's a crazy thing to pray for. It feels weird to kind of pray like, all right, God, bring on the suffering. But you know what I see as I read the Bible? You know what I see as I look back and I, I take a look at the world is that where there's suffering, where there's pain, where there's trials, where there's valleys, there God is. Their revival begins to take place. No longer do I want to be somebody that says, I want to hide from it. I want to avoid the trial. I want to avoid the valley. No, I want to say, I want to go through it because through it, there's revival. Because through it, God is in it. Because through it, God has a plan for it. I'm going through it. Everyone say, I'm going through it. Come on, wake your neighbor up. Say, I'm going through it. We have to change the way that we view the valley. We have to change the way that we walk through this life. We, we can't avoid it. We can't hide from it. We, we have to go through it. This psalmist says, he leads me to the water. He guides me on the path. He, he makes me lie down. And all those sound great. <laughs> he makes me take a nap. I receive it, God. <laughs> Gets me water. He takes me on a walk. All those things, they, they sound great. Then I go through the valley. Wow, that doesn't sound too good. <laughs> Not just the valley, I go through the darkest valley. Well, God would never, you know, he would... He wouldn't have us go through a, a dark. He wouldn't have us face trials. You don't think so? Let's ask a guy, a guy named Job, first of all, what, what he had to go through. Look at what Psalm 66 says a couple chapters later. Psalm 66. Praise our God, all peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Some people need to be encouraged of that this morning. That We got to praise God. We got to let the sound be heard. He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. For you, God, tested us. Uh-oh. You refined us like silver. You brought us into prison. You laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. 
We went through fire and water, but here it is, but you brought us to a place of abundance. He allowed those things to happen, but we know how this story ends. We, we know that I'm going to be dwelling in the house of the Lord forever. You brought me through those things. Could it be that God is trying to lead you through it to get you to the other side, that on the other side, he's got abundance for you? On the other side, there's a cup and it overflows, that, that there's blessings for us, but first we have to be able to go through it. There's certain things. How many know there's certain things that you've got to go through in order to pre- prepare you for the next season? If you think back to when you were a kid, and some of you I know I got to think way back. <laughs> Maybe you grew up in a house like mine and had chores. Anybody have a chore chart in their house growing up? Like there was chores that you had to do. 14 people had chores in the room today. It explains a lot about our world. Okay. <laughs> there was chores that I had to do, right? I had to do the dishes. I had to clean the bathroom, I had to pick up dog poop, I had to mow, I had to do all of these different chores. And if you, if you think back for, with me for just a moment to when you were like third or fourth grade, and you have these chores, and maybe like at my house, you didn't get an allowance. It's like your allowance is that you live in this house and that you eat the food, right? And I remember thinking back to that time and thinking like, My life is horrible. (laughs) I gotta clean this bathroom. I gotta do these dishes. Like, remember, if you think back to those times and you remember, you're like, man, this is so difficult. This is so hard. It's a very first world problem that we have in our world today that we would look at that and think that that's difficult, that we look at that and think that that's hard. But I remember thinking like, man, this is so hard. This is so difficult. But if you were to look at what that brought you to, now in my life, having a house, God has prepared me to handle the blessing that he's given me. Because I know how to do dishes, because I know how to mow, because I know how to do those things. Could it be that what you are going through and what you view right now in your life as this is difficult, this sucks, this is so hard to do, that God is preparing you to say, I've got a blessing for you in the end, and you've got to go through it in order to get to it. That I've got to prepare you for what's on the other end. But we don't want to go through the valley because it's scary, because it's dark, because the enemy's in there, but... Today, I'm telling you, God's saying, don't fear, I'm with you. I'm with you as you go through it. I think sometimes in the church, we over-spiritualize things that we're going through. Like any sort of thing that we go through. Like, ah, the Lord's attacking me today, my phone's dead. No, you just forgot to charge your phone last night. (laughs) That's what happens. Ah, the Lord's just testing me. I know he's got blessings for me. I know he's, he's just preparing me for the, the abundance that he's going to give me. But right now, like, my finances are just, man, it's not good. Well, maybe it's because you just weren't good at handling your finances in the first place that now you're in this valley of it. The Lord's testing me. Like, I just, you know, I'm, I, 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 I'm waiting in this season, and, and he's going to provide for me, but I've just got to trust him in the season of un- unemployment. And that's true, but maybe the reason you lost your job isn't because of spiritual warfare. Maybe it's because you just stopped showing up to work. <laughs> like, there's a cause and effect. There's, there's certain things that, that there's a valley that you have to go through, yes, but sometimes that valley is called correction. I remember being in middle school. Uh oh, the middle school pastor sharing a middle school story. You know it's about to get good here. <laughs> I remember being in middle school and can I share a very, very personal story with you today? Me in middle school, and I was in PE class. And there in PE class, I'm hanging out with other middle schoolers, looking around. Class started, there's no teacher around. Uh oh. And me and some friends are hanging out, and I noticed that at the teacher's desk table thing that there's, like, all this stuff. And, you know, being the classic eighth grader, I was like, I wonder what all this stuff is. (laughs) Went over to the stuff, found the key ring. I said, oh, that looks like the key that would open up all the lockers. I took the key off the key ring, put it in my shoe. Then me and a friend in between classes thought, you know, what would be hilarious is to go through the hallway and open up all the lockers so that when class gets out, all the lockers are just open. That's funny for a moment until you get called in the principal's office and they have like footage of you like opening all the lockers. <laughs> I remember being in the principal's office and my parents getting called in and I'm showing up and getting talked to and getting assigned to in-school suspension for doing it. <laughs> 
And you know, my parents in that moment, they could have gotten defensive for me. They could have said, well, why is there a, a class without a teacher present? Like, you're the one who's not, there's middle schoolers. You think middles, I know for a fact middle schoolers can't be alone. I've gone to camp with them, okay, I know. But they could have, they could have been like, that, why, why would you leave them unattended? Why, why would you, do that? they could have said, you're going to give them in-school semester. You know, we're going to pull them out of the district. We're going to take them to another. They could have done all of that, but instead it's, okay, you did this. Now you face the punishment. You did this. Now you got to go through this thing. And through it, as we go through it, guess what? We start to grow through it. We start to realize, okay, I don't want to do that again. Okay, I shouldn't do that. And we go through it to prepare us for what is next. I believe today that God is calling some people through it. I don't know what you came in with today. I don't know what season of life you're going through. But I think that God wants to just remind you today that I am with you. That you don't have to fear that, that as you go through it, I am there. You don't have to fear evil. There, there, there's stuff that's happening all around, but don't fear for I am with you. Maybe you're going through it today. I I felt that as I was preparing this message that for some it's for right now, but for others, it's for the future. It's it's realizing today that, man, life life is pretty good right now, but I recognize that I'm going to be going through it soon. I recognize that if the world plays out like the Bible tells me it plays out, it's going to be tough. It's going to be difficult. Talk about a dark valley talk about a table in the presence of the enemies I'm going to be going through it and today I want to decide that as I go through it I'm not going to avoid it I'm not going to hide from it I'm going to go through it I'm going to endure it that I'm going to trust in God that as I go through it I'm not going to be scared I'm not going to be fearful how many know the enemy's a liar He's a liar. He, he's constantly lying to us. He's constantly trying to trick us. And I think many people have bought the lie that that when we see the dark valley that we think that's the end for us I can't make it through that valley. That valley's too big. That valley's too long. That valley's too dark. We see the table and we see the enemy and, and they're in the presence of that table. And we say, no, the enemy's there. That, they're, they're, this is the end for me. But can I tell you this morning that we've got the playbook. We know what he's going to do. We know how he's trying to work. I know nobody in this service would ever watch a scary movie, right? No one's ever watched a scary movie in this service. But maybe you've watched a movie before where you're, you're watching a movie and you're leaned in and it gets really quiet and you start to lean in and bam some of you jumped there's a moment that it scares you and it makes you jump for a moment now if you were to go back and watch that again if you were to come to second service and I was to do that same thing again you know what's going to happen you're going to be ready for it you're going to be prepared for it it's not going to scare you it's not going to make you jump it's not going to make you hide why because you know what's coming can I tell you that the bible gives us the playbook we know we know there's going to be a dark valley We know that there's going to be a table in the presence of my enemies. And I don't have to be afraid because he's with me. I don't have to be surprised when I'm going through a valley. I already knew this was going to happen. Can you imagine how much you would throw the enemy off if the next time a valley comes up, the next time a trial comes up, you see it and you go, ha ha, let's go. I'm ready for this valley. Let's walk through this. I can't wait to see what's on the other side rather than running and hiding. There's a valley, it's dark, there's a table in the presence of the enemy, but God is with you. Don't be afraid, don't fear, for he is with you. I love that it says that there's a cup in it, it overflows. It's a table in the presence of my enemy that God's prepared, and on it there's a cup that overflows. I'm reminded of a a story in 2 Kings, and in 2 Kings we see this story, and we see the, the country of Aram's at war with Israel, and Elisha, a prophet from God, is like getting the download from God about everything the king of Aram is saying about the war. Everything he's saying in his bedroom. Like, that's a crazy God moment. And every time that king says, okay, this is how we're going to attack him, Elisha gets the download from God, and Israel's able to counter it over and over and over again. The king gets upset. He realizes what's going on. He's like, all right, let's take Elisha out. So the army surrounds Elisha's tent. Elisha's servant wakes up and look at what it says here in 2 Kings chapter 6. And Elisha, can you go back one to verse 15? When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with 
them, verse 17. And Elisha prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots and fire all around Elisha. He said, oh no, we're surrounded. Oh no, the valley's dark. Oh no, there's a table, the enemy, it's all around. He says, hold on a second, we are surrounded. But God opened his eyes and he opened his eyes and said, it looks like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by angel armies. It looks like I'm in a dark valley, but he is with me. I don't have to be fearful. I don't have to be afraid. God is on my side. The story goes on that they lead them into, they they all go blind. The whole army goes blind. They lead them into the city to the king. The king's like, what should we do with them? Kill them? Aisha says, no, no, no. Let's just feed them. Why? Because my cup, it overflows. Because God has abundance for me, for me, and it goes beyond. And it says that they feed them, they send them out, and that that country never tries to invade Israel again. Come on, how many know that we serve a good God who's got good plans? We serve a good God who while we see certain things, he's working in other areas. We see a God, I see a God that has good plans for you. That while I see an army trying to attack me, his army is surrounding that army. Man, I I feel like as we talk about going through it, that we've been, we've been people who have looked at this world like this is vacation. Like I'm on vacation right now. This is fantastic. And when we're on vacation and bad things happen, we're disappointed. But if we would shift our thinking, if we would change how we view it today, if we'd realize that this isn't vacation, I know where I'm going in the end, that's where the real joy happens, that's where the real life happens, but right now I'm at war, and when bad things happen at war, you know what, that's just how it works. And when good things happen, man, I'm grateful. Man, I'm thankful that God's got that for me right now in this war. But right now, I'm at war. And someday, I'm going to be in the presence of the Lord. Someday, I'm going to be in His house. Would you stand with me all across the room this morning? I love how this psalm ends. Surely, your goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What does this look like to have goodness and mercy, goodness and love following me. It means whenever I start to stumble, they're there to pick me up. They're there to carry me on. Are you thankful this morning for the grace of God that when we start to stumble, that he's following along, that he's picking us back up and sending us down the path? Your goodness and mercy, they follow me. What's that? Your goodness and love, they're they're following me. When I look back at my life, what do I see? That God's been good all along that he's been faithful all along, that his grace has been there, that his love has been there, that I've gone through valleys, but it's led me to where I'm at right now. And I know that someday, someday I'm gonna dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But right now, I know that this is war. Right now, I know that this is a dark valley, but I don't have to be afraid because he is with me. I'm gonna pray this morning and when I get done praying, I wanna invite everybody to respond this morning. Here's what this response is saying saying whatever valley may come maybe it's a valley that you're facing right now but whatever valley comes my way I'm going through it whatever valley comes my way I'm not going to be afraid because I know the Lord is with me God thank you that you've been with me in the past if you are here this morning then you've recognized that God's been with you you recognize that that he's been with you all along and you're saying God thank you that you've been with me thank you that you're going to continue to be with me thank you that I don't have to fear Thank you that when the dark valley seems so dark, that you are still there, that you have good plans for me this morning. So I'm gonna pray. When I say amen, we're gonna respond saying thank you. We're gonna respond out of gratitude. We're gonna respond out of a decision for the future that I'm gonna keep going through it. I'm not hiding. I'm not, I'm not scared. I'm not worried about, no, I'm going through it and I know that the Lord is with me. God, we thank you this morning that we're going through. We thank you this morning that as we go through it, that you are with us. I thank you this morning that we don't have to fear. I thank you this morning that every season, every darkness, every valley, every table, God, that you've prepared it for us, that you've got a plan for us, that you want to bring us through it. God, I pray for those today in the room who are going through it, those in the room today who are maybe facing disease and and sickness, those in the room today who are facing unemployment, those in the room today who are facing a valley that just seems impossible, a valley that seems so dark and so deep and intimidating. God, I pray today that we would no longer hide, but we would go through it. God, I pray that we would rely on you, that we would lean on you, that we know that I don't have to fear because you are with me. Today we respond and say yes. Today we respond and say yes, God, I walk out the plans that you have for me. We love you and we worship you this morning. In your name we pray, amen.